All right, here we are. We are getting ready to do our Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing Picks for the Harris Chain, which is the second stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. What a fun event St. John's River was. Uh, I thought John Cox was going to blow it out after his day three in that mega bag he came in, but his mega bag saved my fantasy team. In just a moment, we're going to jump into the Harris Chain Picks, but before we do that, I want to congratulate the winners from the first event. So congratulations, N. Benedict, on his win in the Beat Hellabass traditional fantasy fishing game. He is the winner of a $25 Omnia gift card. He should be hearing from me via email very soon. He's sitting number 42 overall and in the top 0.1%. Let's look at the team and how he did it. His team was Walters, Gross, Cox, Frazier, and Wong. Uh, and you can see he got those 40 bonus points for the big bag of the tournament from John Cox. That was clutch. Jumping over to Drain the Lake. Buford Shaky, our Geist, he was the winner of the first event, and he's also getting a $25 gift card from Omnia. And don't worry, guys, if you didn't win, you can still use my code down below in the description, HB15, to save 15% off on anything from Omnia Fishing. Plus, you guys that are winning gift cards, you can stack that code and get some extra gear with that gift card. Here's what the winning Drain the Lake lineup looked like. Cruz got that on there so he got the winner so he got the bonus 320 points which doubly doubles your point so picking a winner in drain the lake is super key and getting the winners the big bag and the big bass of the tournament are all keys for getting extra bonus points in the traditional fancy fishing game overall his team looks pretty good he didn't burn too many big names here and got some good points i would maybe save brian schmidt for the mississippi river that's just me uh, but I could see most of these other guys uh, pretty good. Clint Davis, maybe I would have liked him on Pickwick or Ledge Lake or something like that. But uh, all in all, well done. Don't worry, you can still join the Beat Halibass group. Just go to the group directory on the Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing site. Scroll down, find Beat Halibass. Click on it. Enter the word, password, visor, all capital letters, and you're in. Because you're watching these videos, you're part of the team, and you're eligible to win those Amity Fishing gift cards for each event and some year-end prizes. So after St. John's event, day one was looking bleak. I was down in the 40-some percentile. Day two, I bumped up to 55. And then day three, John Cox's surge up to the top 10 with his mega bag put me into the 70 percentiles, kind of saved my tournament. And then uh, getting those bonus points really propelled me and got me up in the 85th percentile, which got me in the green here. As you can see, I got those 40 bonus points were super clutch. And a couple other people made the day two cut. And and my guys that didn't make the day three or day three cut didn't bomb. They were in the 60s, so they still got decent points. Avoiding anglers in the 80s, 90s is really helpful in fantasy fishing. And the more guys you can get in the day three and day four cuts and get some bonuses, the better off you're going to be. My Drain the Lake roster looks even better. I'm up almost at 95%. You can see my lineup here. I got about half my anglers to day three and two to the final day. And I had John Cruz, so I got the big 320 bonus points, which was super clutch. And I feel like I didn't burn too many anglers that I'm going to want to use later in the year. I've mapped it all out, uh, and I feel like I'm looking good for the rest of the season. Now let's break down the Harris chain before we get into the picks. While St. John's River was pretty exciting and there was some giants caught, a lot of guys struggled to catch limits and were only getting a handful of bites per day. I think Harris chain has the potential to be wide open. We're rolling into a warming trend, which... Looks really good. Even though we're going to have a little bit of cloud, a little bit of wind, which could be good for just fishing, it may not make the sight fishing super wide open, but I think anglers will find some good sight fishing because the full moon is on the 16th, which butts up right to the start of the tournament. So this should be a really big tournament. And I expect to see people catching pre-spawn, post-spawn, spawn, looking at them, fishing offshore, fishing shallow, punching. Everything's going to be on the table. So I think any anglers will be able to find their strength. So this could be a really exciting tournament, but I think it's going to make this tournament a little bit hard to pick because I think it's going to be a little bit wide open. And I think it's going to probably be high 80s, maybe up to 100 pounds to win this tournament. So it should be an exciting event. Starting in bucket E, Mike Canelli had a really bad tournament on St. John's River, and people are definitely looking at him. He's got almost 20% of the early ownership as the first day of the fantasy fishing opens. It's a quick turnaround. We got back to back. So we the anglers are already pre-fishing today and, and the tournament starts on Thursday. Kennedy could be a good pick. There's a few other anglers that look pretty good in this bucket, but in the end, I'm going to go Kyle Welcher. I think he's just too good of a fisherman. He spent most of his rookie and sophomore Bassmaster Elite Series in buckets A and B. So he's not really used to being bound in bucket 
eat, and I don't think he's going to last here long. I think he's a pretty good sight fisherman. He loves to frog. He loves to punch. He should find something that he really likes on the Harris chain. And he had a good event. I think he took a third in an open down here a few years back. So I expect Walter to bounce back. I like him. If you want to take Iconelli, he's going to be good value. I don't think he's going to be in bucket E long either. Uh, Hudnall, he's on my drain the lake team. So there's a few other guys that definitely could be sneaky good here. And there's some uh, early in the year, you can find some gems in bucket E until kind of the AOI kind of rearranges itself after a few events. Bucket D, there's some hammers in here. Hackney, Fighter, Benton, Clark Wentland, Mosley, a lot of really good anglers in here. Um, but ultimately, Matthew Roberts, I think he won an event either on Toho or Kissimmee or the Harris Chain, so he's done well in Florida. Uh, really a lot of good anglers in here. But for me, I'm going Hunter Shryock. I think he's done well on some of these Florida lakes. Um, he's a good sight fisherman. He loves fish shallow. Much like Welcher, he should do well and be able to find his strength and fish big line and catch big bass. And uh, I like him a lot. Clark Wetland, also a good sight fisherman fighter. It was hard not to pick him in bucket D. Much like I said for Ike Nally, he's not going to be down here very long. The defending ALI is going to rise up and be in bucket A and B in no time. So if you want to get some value picks, think about the fighter man in bucket D this week. Bucket C, my first inclination was to go Scott Martin. Uh, I think he's going to rebound after... Uh, a, you know, not great season openers on the St. John's River. Uh, his track record in the Harris chain, so-so. So I definitely want to look at him. Cobb is a pretty good sight fisherman, although not a great track record in Florida. Christie, great value in C. He's not going to be here very long. Swindle, Gustafson, guys that do well. Uh, as a dark horse, I think a guy like Josh Douglas, who had a really bad first day at the St. John's River and then rebound and put like 18 pounds on the scale and got up uh, into some decent point range. I think he could be a really good pick. He's no stranger to gas. He grass. He leaves Minnesota quite often early and spends a lot of time on these Florida lakes. So he's very familiar with these lakes. He's well suited to fish shallow as well offshore for these fish. Uh, but in the end, Brian Schmidt, almost every top 10, every win he's ever had has been in a grass. Brian's had a lot of success on grass fisheries as well as Florida events and mixed bags, but I think he's going to be poised well. Anytime you put him around big bass, good fishing and grass, it's a recipe for success. So I'm looking for Brian to make a DA4 push and be in the top 10. Now I'm going to lock him in, and I feel like he's a good value and a little under the radar. Bucket B has some good options. Polinick. Always a good pick. He's strong everywhere. He's kind of early in his career. He struggled in Florida, but he's kind of fixed that, and he's done well in Florida in in the recent years. Poroznik coming back his first year. He's definitely going to want to miss, make a statement after a decent finish at the St. John's. I think he wants to have a coming out party and really put up a big number here. I really was tempted to pick him. Chris Johnson, an excellent shallow water sight angler. Lester won an open already in Florida this year. Zaldane, all guys that could do really well. Buddy Gross has done well in Florida, fishing offshore. There's a really a plethora of good options here. But in the end, Brian New has four Bassmaster tournaments in Florida. He's won two of them and got a 21st and a 22nd. Those are pretty good odds. He was saying on day one of the Bassmaster Live on St. John's River that he thought Florida fish were the most predictable fish in all of the country. At least for him, they might. I think a lot of people would argue that, but uh, he seems to got them figured out. You know, averaging a top 10 finish in four events is pretty stout. Lastly, bucket A, I'm going to lock in with my only Florida angler in my five-man roster, and that's going to be John Cox. I think he's going to build up that momentum from Florida. He's going to be able to sight fish, fish memories. He knows he's got a ton of experience on Harris Chain. I think he's going to put up some big numbers. He's sleeping in his own bed, and I think that's a recipe for success. But there are a lot of other good options. I wanted to pick Walters as well. Uh, I think he's going to be strong all year, angler of the year candidate. I don't think we can sleep on Austin Felix. He could be someone that you could literally pick every turn of the year and have a really strong fancy fishing team. I think Walters and Felix are two guys that I think will compete for AOI at the end of the year. So those are my top picks uh, for a tiebreaker. I'm not going to quite go 100 pounds, even though everybody's saying that's going to happen. I'm going low 90s, 92 two pounds, two ounces. That tiebreaker is set for both regular fancy fishing and drain the lake. Now let's hop over to drain the lake and look at who I put on my eight-man roster for Drain the Lake. As we mentioned before, the eight anglers we used at St. John's, we no longer can use the rest of the year. So now we're down from 94 anglers to 86, and we got to use for the next nine events. So I've got mine all mapped out with my planner, and here's what I'm going with. Scott Canterbury, tons of experience both on the FLW as well as bass in Florida. He knows what's going on. I decided that, you know, spring fishing, sight fishing, I thought he'd be a good pick. Gustafson, He's got a second in an FLW event on Harris Chains. He seems to do well in the spring. 
I think he's got things figured out. <clears throat> he's fishing pretty well. Uh, I just thought this was a good place to use Gussie. Derek Hudnall, very comfortable in shallow water. I didn't know where else to use him. Put him in here. Kobe Krieger, love shallow fishing. This should be wide open. I think he's going to do well in this Florida event. Scott Martin, wanted to use him on a regular team, but I did sneak him in here, and we're going to use him in the drain the lake. Tyler Rivette. Super consistent, love shallow fishing, Louisiana. He's proven to have some pretty solid finishes in Florida, so I thought this was a good place to push him in, into my lineup for Drain Lake and use him up. Shryock, we already talked about why he's on my team. And then David Williams, mixed results in Florida, but pretty decent. Got some experience on the Harris chain. I didn't love him anywhere else, so we're going to use him up on Harris chain and hope to get some good results. Let's get your picks in. You only got a couple days, uh, depending on when you watch this video. You can still join the group. Beat hell of ass. Password, all capitals, viewers. If you appreciate the content and you appreciate what Omni is doing, check out their website. they got a great assortment of fish and tackle. And if you want, use my code, save some money. If fantasy fishing is not your jam and you'd rather watch fishing videos or bait hacks or things like that, check out this playlist coming up on the screen right here.